illuminated encephalomyelitis and the more severe hemorrhagic form, I'm going to show images of mild encephalitis with a reversible splenial lesion or MERS in this brain bit by bit vlog. MERS is a clinical radiological entity that has first been described in 2004 in Asian children after a viral infection. And the encephalopathy, so the clinical part of the MERS, is very nonspecific, whereas the radiological findings are very specific. In the majority of cases, there is an ovoid lesion in the splenium of the corpus callosum with restricted diffusion that normalizes after a few days. And the same group also published in another journal similar cases after influenza infection with hyperintensity and restricted diffusion in the corpus callosum. Sometimes it involves the entire corpus callosum or the entire splenium and then you get a boomerang sign. MERS is thought to be caused by cytokines related to the infection and the release of the interleukin 1 and 6 leads to activation of T cells and damage to the blood brain barrier which leads to an increase in extracellular glutamate and cytotoxic edema. Because the splenium is especially rich in glutamate receptors, this part of the brain is especially prone to MERS. And the reason we think it's cytotoxic edema and not intramyelinic edema is that it also occurs in neolates where the white matter has not been as extensively myelinated and you can see the same pattern on diffusion weighted images. If it's only involvement of the splenium it's called MERS type 1 and if there's more extensive involvement sometimes of the white matter of the corona radiata, it's called MERS type 2. Initially it was described post-viral infection in children but later in adults as well and then the descriptive term cytotactic lesion of the corpus callosum can be used and in CLOCK or MERS in adults, you see the same pattern as in children. And with the recent COVID pandemic, of course, there were case reports of cytotoxic lesions after COVID vaccination as well. So this is a 23 year old male who presented 14 days after COVID vaccination, his PCR for COVID was negative. So he had no COVID infection and he was disoriented, amnesia and confused. And on the MRI on day 18, you can see the restricted diffusion with faint high signal on the flare image, which normalized at day 26. And eight months after this episode, he still didn't have any residual symptoms. If you think of cytotoxic edema that we discussed in vlog 12 about a hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, you can also think of ischemia. And especially in adults, it might be difficult to make the distinction. Clinically, in ischemia, there's an acute onset. And in MERS, there's encephalopathy. And on imaging, in MERS, the ADC is much lower than in stroke. So measuring the ADC might guide the clinician a little bit as well. MERS can also occur when there are electrolyte disturbances. For example, in patients who use thermogenic dietary supplements to lose weight, because these supplements promise to increase your metabolism and help you lose weight. 
And this is the cause of MERS in thermogenic dietary supplements. There's in literature also the term reversible splenial lesion syndrome, which is more of an umbrella term. MERS is more or less reserved for post-infectious, but not always. And you can also have similar patterns because of anti-epileptic drugs and, as mentioned, electrolyte disturbances and al alcoholics. And there was a very nice scheme in Neuroradiology 2020 where you can see how the hyponatremia contributes to the reversible splenial lesion. And in the next vlog, I will switch to the metabolic brain diseases, starting with hyponatremia and going into a little bit more detail about this one. Thanks for